Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the most fascinating nearby galaxies to us, the galaxy known as Centaurus A. And there's a really important reason for this. It's actually a recent image released by some of the Australian scientists. The image you see right here. But by itself, this doesn't really explain to you why this is fascinating. And that's because, well, to try to understand why this is fascinating, we have to imagine that we're able to see the radio waves. And so here, if you were to stand somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, for example, in Australia, New Zealand, some parts of South America, and if you were to look into the night skies and try to actually see all of this in the radio light, this is what you would be seeing. And this is absolutely mind-blowing. The actual radio frequencies coming from this galaxy would be dramatically bigger than the full moon in the night skies with these formations themselves being millions of light years in length, but because of the proximity of this galaxy to the Milky Way, it essentially forms something that resembles this. And even though I was already convinced that Centaurus A is one of the most fascinating nearby galaxies, this image by itself once again blew my mind. And so let's discuss this galaxy and also discuss a little bit more about this discovery and what this shows us in regards to the events going on inside this particular galaxy right now. So first of all, when it comes to distances, it's still actually not clear how distant this galaxy is from the Milky Way. The current estimates suggest that it's anywhere from 10 to 16 million light years away from us, but because of the amount of activity on the inside, it becomes a little bit difficult to measure the exact distances, which usually employ various emissions from various types of variable stars. But generally, the average estimate here would be about 12 million light years. So this is what a lot of scientists usually assume when they do a lot of these measurements. And also, because it's so bright and so close to us, it's usually one of the best targets for amateur astronomy. But at the same time, because of this brightness, and also because of its unusual shape, it's very difficult to determine what sort of a galaxy this is. The scientists today are not sure if this is an elliptical galaxy, a spiral galaxy, or something in between. And for the first hundred years of its discovery since 1826, it actually wasn't even that interesting to scientists, mostly because back then nobody even knew about active galactic nuclei or black holes in the middle of galaxies, or actually that these were even galaxies. They were believed to be different nebula, potentially different planets. But at the same time, once the scientists realized what sort of a galaxy this was, they also realized how incredibly special this galaxy was. This is the closest active radio galaxy to us with a very active galactic nucleus on the inside that produces a tremendous amount of radiation and obviously a tremendous amount of energy that's being released through these two astrophysical jets pointed away from the black hole. And the material here is believed to be released at approximately half the speed of light, but it does slow down with time. And the recent discovery from the recent study suggests that a lot of this radio material farther away from the galaxy moves at a speed of about 1000 kilometers per second. But because of its unusual shape that seems to be either elliptical or potentially spiral in shape, and also because of its active nucleus, it's sort of been assumed that this was probably a result of a collision between a spiral galaxy and a collision between an elliptical galaxy. And this resulted in this iconic shape of the galaxy that we're observing from planet Earth. And based on the current calculations of the mass of the central black hole, it suggested that the mass here is at least 10 times more massive than the one in our own galaxy. So here it's about 55 million masses of the Sun. And all of this activity first produces a lot of radio light, but also ends up producing some of the X-rays visible from farther distances away from the central black hole. And although the X-ray jets here are several thousand light years long, the radio jets end up producing something that's thousands of times longer, at least a million light years in length. And there also seems to be quite a lot of different star formation activity, which once again reinforces the idea that this is a result of a galactic collision. So for example, even though the center, the bulge of the galaxy, seems to be composed of mainly really old red stars, the disk surrounding it is for the most part uh, showing the signs of recent star formation. There are quite a lot of different star formation regions here and they're sort of visible as tiny pink dots in this video. There are over a hundred of them in this video and there are over a hundred such regions in Centaurus A galaxy. As a matter of fact, there were at least two different supernova in the last few decades here. So this is a pretty active galaxy in terms of star formation as well. And a few months ago, the iconic Event Horizon Telescope team released an image from this galaxy showing us what's happening right near the center of the black hole. 
essentially showing us how the jet evolves really really close to the black hole and how it seems to possess very specific structures. And you can learn more about this by watching one of the older videos that should be popping up somewhere in there at some point. And so essentially this is a pretty exciting galaxy to study, even though unfortunately you can mostly only see it from the southern hemisphere or from some of the low regions in the northern hemisphere at a very specific time during nighttime. But once again, this new image created by the scientists using Australian radio telescopes it takes it to a completely new level. Here we're looking at the most detailed radio emission image ever produced coming from one of the nearest supermassive black holes to planet Earth with each of these bubbles produced by the supermassive black hole being at least a few hundred million years old. But once again, if you were to imagine this in radio waves, that's essentially when it becomes mind-blowing. It's the size of approximately 16 full moons. And a lot of this was not actually visible to us simply because, well, first of all, these are extremely difficult to see because of the noise, radio noise coming from a lot of sources on planet Earth, but also because the jets themselves are just extremely bright. So seeing the farther details here or seeing the bubbles on the outskirts becomes just very, very difficult. And to study all of this, the scientists used the radio telescope that sort of looks like this. There are 256 of these sets in this region spread over a large area that's several square kilometers in size. The telescope that's usually referred to as the Murchison Whitefield Array. And so because of the sensitivity of this telescope, along with its location in an extremely radio quiet zone, it allowed the scientists to produce this paper that essentially studies the effects from these jets. And specifically focusing on the radio emissions, confirming one of the interesting ideas in regards to how these black holes are actually fed and what happens when these jets interact with some of the gas around the galaxy. Today this idea is referred to as the chaotic cold accretion, and it refers to the idea behind how these black holes are fed. Essentially here, the cold gas that's usually condensed in the galactic halo then ends up slowly moving toward the center of the galaxy, with all of this condensed gas moving closer to the central black hole, which then ends up feeding the black hole, which then produces the jets and releases more gas to the outskirts. With the jets then inflating further and spreading this gas across a very large area around the galaxy, around the galactic halo, which then sort of restarts the cycle again as all of this gas starts to condense and moves closer to the central black hole. So this feedback mechanism is what the scientists believe feeds the black hole and what the scientists believe we're observing in this radio image produced by MWA. And it seems that a lot of charged particles here are very likely re-accelerated and are essentially interacting with strong magnetic fields present in this region. That's essentially what's producing these radio waves. And the material right here moves at a speed of about 1100 kilometers per second and approximately three masses of the sun of this material is being released from the central black hole every single year. Here's actually another image that was produced by the scientists and this is a composite image showing us some of the radio plasma that's seen in blue, and you can see there's quite a lot of it. Also x-rays that are visible in orange, and large amounts of cold neutral hydrogen that's visible in purple. Suggesting of course that there's quite a lot of various interaction, quite a lot of re-acceleration of matter away from the black hole, and some of this matter then ends up falling back into the black hole, feeding it once again. So honestly it's a really interesting discovery and a really interesting confirmation to what's actually happening in this galaxy and how a lot of black holes seem to be fed by the gas that they themselves seem to release from the center of a typical galaxy. But more importantly it's just an amazing image and an incredible discovery. For now that's all I wanted to mention about Centaurus A and about this study and once we learn more or once more images come out of this incredible galaxy I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Check out some of the previous Centaurus A videos somewhere above me, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.